Well, hello and welcome to the Herbal Hour. Today we're going to discuss the urinary system and stay tuned to the end because I want to explain how fear and the urinary system are related, the kidneys specifically. Hi, I'm Mary Bourne. I'm a traditional naturopath. I love sharing natural remedies with people. Um, natural remedies have been around for hundreds, even thousands of years. And it is that way because they work. They're very, very efficient. And in most cases, they are very mild. In a lot of cases, you're going to be familiar with some of the herbs we're talking about, either as a culinary herb or uh, one that you enjoy the scent of or that you've seen the flowers grow and you love the garden aspect of it. So this is one of three venues that I have on my channel and this is called Herbal Hour because yes, in fact, it does last generally an hour. I also have a weekly video presentation that I do um, that talks about various subjects and it's usually around 20 minutes and I call this Health to Home. The other one is just a fun garden venue where sometimes it's only three minutes, sometimes it's 10 minutes, but basically I share my gardening ideas. Sometimes I take you to um, a place of interest. We Last year we went to Mackinac Island for the Proven Winners Flower Show. So there were, um, I hope that you are enjoying uh, the, the venues, the classes that I um, present. Um, if you do, please comment, um, subscribe, mm -hmm. and um, share. These particular, these videos need to be shared because people do not have the information they need to make the great choices that would benefit their health. So I have been teaching classes for over 40 years now. I um, Three years ago, I ventured into the virtual teaching world. Uh, it's been interesting and um, it's been a learning curve for me because I'm used to audience participation and feedback from the audience. And of course, when you're working um, virtually, you don't get that. So I would like to jump right in. We're going to discuss a lot of different aspects about the urinary system. And as I mentioned, I hope that you um, will maybe take notes or do some screenshots. You can always email me, Dr. Mary at bornforhealth.com. And I will be happy to send you the slide presentation in PDF form. So let's jump right in, shall we? So we're gonna talk about understanding the urinary system. And there's some common urinary um, health issues and edema is one of those. That means that you have swelling somewhere. Uh, we're going to talk specifically on each one of these subjects. So we have edema, urinary tract infections, inflammatory conditions like interstitial cystitis, uh, urethritis, nephritis, kidney stones, urgency, and urinary incontinence, nighttime urination, prostatitis and benign prostate hyperplasia, which is called BPH, kidney weakness, and renal failure. We want to talk about how the body responds to these and gives you clues that you might be dealing with this. So first, we should talk about some basic urinary health. 
Obviously, the first thing we need to think about is hydration. And I'm very pleased to note that people are getting much more aware of how important hydration is. But unfortunately, what they think of when they talk about hydration are syrupy drinks like Gatorade or um, uh, energy drinks or things like that. And really what your body needs is water, pure water. Uh, you have to flush the acid and toxins from the body and you're not going to be able to do that with things like Gatorade. Now, in the, on the average, uh, 68 cups so is what's recommended, maybe a quart and a half. But you know, what if you're a child? What if you're, uh, you know, over the average weight? So I like the formula that you drink half your body weight in ounces of water per day. So you take your body weight, say your, um, your weight is 150 pounds, then you need 75 ounces of water every day. And you should drink the greater part of that water during the day, not toward evening. And I'm going to occasionally take sips of my water. So, so the, that's basically the formula I go by and I recommend. Now, why? what are the clues? Well, if your urine is pale in color and has no odor, you're great. You're fine. No, you know, no, you're doing the right thing. But if it's dark colored urine, it means that you need to drink more water. Now there's certain nutrients like B vitamins that will affect the color of it. <laughs> there's beets that may affect the color of it. There, you know, asparagus is definitely going to uh, affect the odor. <laughs> if you've ever had uh, asparagus, you understand what I'm talking about. So, um, but basically if you follow those um, basic rule of thumb formula, um, drinking half your body weight in ounces of water, you're probably going to be fine on the hydration level. Now, there's some things like um, beverages that are very acidifying and carbonated beverages stress the kidneys because they are very acidifying. Overuse of caffeinated beverages, especially coffee and energy drinks, will also stress the kidneys. You know, Gatorade actually stresses the kidneys. It's uh, a very imbalanced um, formula, high in sugar and colors. It's just not the thing you want your children to be drinking. Now, fruit juice, milk, alcohol, and other beverages, they don't replace the need for water. They, um, just because they're liquid, doesn't mean they um, uh, replace the water. So I've seen these big water jugs that people will carry around, but unfortunately they start out the day with say 42 ounces or whatever, and they end the day with 30. That's not right. You need to be drinking as you go throughout the day if you're going to be doing those kind of jugs of water. Now there's uh, diets that help uh, alkalize the body. I'm not a fan of alkaline water. I feel that you should be doing this with your diet and not compensating with alkaline water. And maybe you'll form that same opinion as you um, delve into this class. So the body produces acid during energy production. So through metabolizing, uh, and uh, your daily activities, you're going to expend acid and send it to the kidneys. It's the kidney's job to get rid of those acids. So an alkaline diet uh, consisting primarily of fruits and vegetables will reduce the stress on the kidneys. Um, so doing lots of raw vegetables or maybe some vegetable soups, those type of things will uh, improve the alkalinity. Now, refined sugar, grains, and excess consumption of animal protein will put more stress on the kidneys. Now, there's some people that will benefit from a carnivore diet, 
but they really need to make sure that they're drinking lots of water, that they're taking enzymes to digest those proteins and um, supporting their body in other ways. Um, but digestion is the key. You need to make sure that you're digesting these formulas or these um, veggies and, and fruits. A lot of people have trouble digesting these uh so taking an enzyme product might be the answer. So let's talk about mineral balance. You know, I love to watch the homesteading videos and it is very interesting how many of them will put out an array of minerals and animals know enough when they're low in something to eat that mineral. I just find that absolutely fascinating. Now the kidneys, help to maintain fluid mineral balance. So calcium and magnesium, sodium and potassium, these are balanced. Um, chlorine, uh, when you drink chlorine, you upset this balance. So you really need to look into taking um, your water, passing it through a filter that at least gets rid of the chlorine. You don't want to be anywhere near chlorine. Chlorine disrupts the microbes in the gut. It, it's not a friendly thing at all. And uh, skin absorbs chlorine. So if you're going to be using anything with chlorine, you should be wearing gloves. Um, you should be wearing a mask and not breathing in chlorine because it can affect the microbes that support lung health. So when this system is out of balance and the kidneys can't get rid of the acid like it should, um, it affects our bones and our joints. So in traditional Chinese medicine, the kidneys are called build the bone. So there is a huge relationship in Chinese medicine to bone health and the kidneys. And we'll go into a little more of that in um, in a few minutes. So now let's understand what's happening when we have urinary health issues. So symptoms of edema are obvious. You, you, you have swollen feet, um, swollen ankles, puffiness under the eyes. Um, your hands are, um, you maybe can't get your rings back on or whatever. Now, you obviously need to get a medical checkup. Find out what's happening. Um, you know, edema can be a sign of congestive heart failure and other serious diseases. So um, that's the end product. And really what we want to do is avoid these things. So potassium is important for um, healthy kidney function, but you know, diuretics, 10 drugs tend to deplete potassium levels. And they'll often tell you to take a potassium supplement or to eat bananas or whatever to, um, but you know, these things aren't things you do on a daily basis. Sometimes you gotta do a supplement and uh, take a supplement of potassium and things that are closer to natural are going to be absorbed by the body and utilized in a more effective way. So many herbal diuretics supply potassium as well because they understand that there's a balance there. So uh, calcium can be very um, uh, helpful too, but the wrong kind of calcium can actually never get into the bone. So stimulating, irritating diuretics. You want to use stimulating diuretics for acute edema. That means you've got to kick the kidneys into working. And um, herbs that do that are juniper berry, bushu, and uva ursi. Of the three of them, I really love uva ursi. But I have a class that I did on juniper berry. It's one of the health to home classes. And I'll link it in the description below. Bushu is also found with cranberry, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So most diuretic formulas utilize stimulating diuretics as a 
primary ingredient. Now, oftentimes you'll see juniper berry, but there'll be offsetting calming herbs to reduce the, the amount of stimulation it's getting to those, um, to the kidneys. So now we wanna look at tonifying or non-irritating diuretics. And we are heading into spring and many of us are finding dandelions and I never use an herbicide on a, anywhere in my yard. I welcome the dandelions because, and you might too, after you find out. I also have a, a health to home class I did on dandelion and it's very, very nutritious. Every part of the dandelion can be used except of course the, the, the seed, the little puffy thing. Blow that away. Share it with your neighbors. But the um, dandelion, the, the, even the, the beautiful little yellow flower, you can saute that. You can put it in your uh, smoothies. You can put it on an uh, omelet. It's delightful. I've seen pancakes made with the uh, dandelion flower. The leaves are particularly, especially young leaves, particularly beneficial and they are what we call a survival food. So you can maybe dehydrate them. Um, dandelion tea is a wonderful herb. So go look that um, class up. I think you'll find it quite in interesting. Now I found cleavers um, when I was uh, creating a berm on my um, entryway into my home. I found cleavers and I thought how fun are these things you know you're walking along and they stick to your socks they stick to your pants they're the original velcro and they are so beneficial as a tonic diuretic corn silk now I have recommended yes that's the you know the soap you throw away you strip off the corn on the cob <clears throat> and you throw away all that silk you need to be making a tea out of it or uh, using it as uh, a nourishing food now um ecumenia uh, or acumia i'm not that familiar with that goldenrod these are the things oh people say oh my goodness that's causing my allergy actually not it, goldenrod will actually support respiratory health now nettles we're going to talk about nettles because it's one of my favorites and parsley i told you you'd recommend recognize some of these foods as culinary foods. So urinary tract infections. <clears throat> Urine is sterile. Um, that is, a, it's free of bacteria. Now to get a bacterial infection, bacteria has to enter the urethra and travel upwards into the bladder. Now, the way the way the body is and forgive me if, you, if this offends anybody, but if you're female, you're going to have your, your uh, urethra go, <clears throat> well, it's shorter at times, no, shorter five times more than the urethra for a male. Now, a male, the urethra goes in front of the uh, prostate. And when the prostate swells, you're going to feel pressure on the urinary system. And a female, when um, a female has the urethra actually go, well, it's very close. I think I have a picture of it in a little bit. So let's talk about cranberry. Now, a lot of people have heard how important cranberry is for uh, urinary tract infections, but uh, it's really not what people think. Cranberries actually affect the wall of the urethra so that in 
infections can't, or bacteria can't adhere to the wall. So um, that's how it works. But if you work it in combination with Bushu, uh, Bushu is an herb that actually helps prevent the bacteria from doing harm. So consider drinking unsweetened cranberry juice daily, but you know, you can sweeten it, add a little bit of um, honey or maple syrup or something like that. But you can take it regularly. It's a food source. So doing cranberry on a daily basis is uh, if you have a tendency toward UTIs, that might be something you'd consider. Arbutin. Arbutin is a substance found in some plants that changes in the kidneys to form hydroquinone. Um, and that's a powerful urinary disinfectant. It is most effective when the urine is alkaline. And the pH of urine should be about 6.5. So um, when it's alkaline, that's you know, maybe you're doing too much alkaline things and it can't actually break down the um, acids that it needs to. So Uva ursi, Pipsisua, and some species of Manzanita contain this compound. Now, berberine, boy, do I love this supplement. Herbs that contain berberine can also be helpful for UTIs. Berberine is an antibacterial agent, which is excreted by way of the kidneys. So it's disinfecting the entire urinary passageway. Now, these herbs include golden seal. Now, golden seal is still on the endangered species of herbs. So I really don't like using golden seal. Now, Nature Sunshine uses um, golden seal that is um, harvested from farms that have been growing golden seal specifically for harvest. So they're, they don't go out into the wild and uh, get rid of all the golden seal out there. Oregon grape is another one, barberry and coptis. Now you can also take berberine as a supplement and I absolutely love this. This has so many advantages. Uh, I mean, not only is it antibacterial, but we've been finding that it's anti-inflammatory. So berberine herbs are typically combined with diuretic and arbutin containing herbs to create formulas for treating UTIs. So look into this formula. I have uh, information on my website where you can actually look into each one of these herbs and combinations that I recommend. Now, urinary tract inflammation is um, various parts of the urinary system can be inflamed. Uh, interstitial cystitis. Now, every time you see the itis after the word, that means inflammation. So now you ne learned a little bit of Latin here. Uh, itis is Latin for inflammation. So your urethritis is inflammation of the urethra and nephritis is inflammation of the kidneys and the nephrons of the kidneys. So it can be aided by anti-inflammatory remedies or soothing diuretics. So let me take my water here. So urinary anti-inflammatories Soothing diuretics to ease burning or scalding sensations include corn silk, marshmallow, couch grass, and kava kava, which is a mild analgesic. Now, taking kava kava by itself is uh, interesting because it the brain is still working very effectively but the muscles don't want to follow what the brain says if you take too much kava kava. So you have to be careful with that. You know, alcohol numbs the brain, but kava kava, muscle, muscles are relaxed by kava kava. 
So anti-inflammatory remedies that may help the urinary system include mangosteen, uh, noni. Um, noni juice has been, I have used this with clients who have been really, I've used it with two people who have been on the list for a kidney transplant. And by the time the operation, like six, six weeks to two months later, after drinking noni juice every single day, their doctor decided they were no longer uh, qualifying, that their kidneys were healing. So it is a powerful drink. And I love the Nature Sunshines has um, got some grapefruit, grape juice, uh, which makes it taste a, a little bit better. And it also comes in the capsule form. Uh, licorice. Now, some people can't take licorice because they're on uh, blood pressure medication and it can affect the blood pressure. Now, pomegranate. Pomegranate juice has been pretty popular, but remember, sugar is a no-no. So most of them are loaded with sugar. So diuretics for urinary inflammation. We have stimulating diuretics are not good choices. Remember, you're Kidneys are in hyper motion as it is. So you don't want to do stimulating diuretics. And what you want to do, especially if you've been um, diagnosed with nephritis. So tonifying diuretics are better choices. Asparagus, there's been so much research on asparagus. And even canned asparagus is beneficial. So um, and there's our friend cleavers, dandelion, goldenrod, nettle. Now, in this case, nettle leaf is what is necessary. And I have in the description below uh, my class on nettle uh, leaf and the benefits of it. Parsley again and noni. Now, urgency. Wow, is this a tough one? Many people. Um, they have this problem with frequent urination and the urge to urinate. And then all of a sudden they can't urinate. You know, they're sitting on the toilet and they know they have to go and they can't. So this may be due to the fact the person isn't drinking enough water. Um, my mother-in-law was a school bus driver and she prided herself uh, on the fact that she never had to go to the bathroom during work time. Hello? And she had edema in her ankles, like they used to call it piano leg, you know, where there was no definition between the calf and the ankle. All this woman had it. So, you know, definitely kidney. She died of congestive heart failure. And we'll see the relationship there. So it can also be the result of UTI or cystitis. So, you know, you have a low grade infection and you're not drinking enough water to kind of, you know, the solution to pollution is dilution. So, <laughs> so incontinence, the tendency for urine to leak may be caused by UTIs. You know, I get a big kick out of these women with their thinking wonderful that they've got a pad that they can, you don't know that there's a pad there. It's like, come on, get to the root of the problem. Quit trying to fix it with temporary solutions and band-aids, you know? So the tendency for urine to leak, uh, you know, it might be caused by UTIs, constipation, or foods and substances that ir irritate the bladder. They'll drink coffee throughout the day, and um, ignore the uh, thing, uh, you know, the urge to urinate. And then they'll drink a cup of water and then they'll say, oh, it's the water's fault. <laughs> no, it was your uh, need for all that caffeine, which was creating the problem. So, um, and alcohol can be the same thing. Blood pressure medications, you know, blood pressure medications, they want, to reduce the liquid in the body. And so um, it creates this gotta go, can't go type of situation. 
And it can be related to a lack of tone in the sphincter muscles. So, um, you know, the, after you urinate, do some Kegel exercises, pull in, tighten and tone. So um, start by avoiding substances which irritate the bladder and, and stay well hydrated. Remember that rule about drinking half your body weight in ounces of water. Use soothing diuretics like corn silk and marshmallow. You can also tone up this bladder and sphincter muscles by doing the Kegel exercises, which are extremely helpful. So let's talk about urinary astringents. Urinary astringents can be helpful by for toning the urinary system. Now, this is a picture of horsetail or also known as joint grass. And horsetail may also be helpful as it is helpful for um, blood in the urine. Uva ursi can tone the bladder and may be helpful for incontinence when taken as a tea or a tincture, but I've, you know, I've had many people take it as a capsule and, um, benefited by it. So other urinary herbs with uh, stringing action include agrimony, couch grass, and juniper. But remember, taking these as a single may not be the answer. It may be that you need to take these in combination with other um, herbs. Drinking my water. Oh, let's talk about kidney stones. My poor husband had kidney stones twice in our life together so far. And the first time he went to the medical doctor, he um, uh, they he went into the hospital. They did uh, it just it was a nightmare, painful. Um, it was just awful. The second time he says, well, I'm not going to go through that again. I have the symptoms, the same symptoms as I had before. Now this is two years later and he's a chiropractor. And so he was working with um, um, an MD that functional MD. And she said, well, here's my script for kidney stones. And it was cranberry, <laughs> lettuce, which a wild lettuce is um, uh, anti-inflammatory and um, uh, pain relieving. And cranberry juice was that he had to go out and <laughs> get it from Whole Food. So he did, uh, and um, hydrangea. The hydrangea actually broke up the stones and then the cranberry made the stones easy to pass. So it was a much easier way of getting rid of the kidney stones than the one he did. Um, but everybody has to follow their own conscience and do your due diligence, do your own studying and Get in touch with what feels right. Now, before we go on, I just want to point out what these little things here are on top of the kidneys. I've had people, I'll ask them, do you know where your adrenals are? And they have no clue. These are your adrenals sitting right on top of these little, um, they're like little snow caps sitting on top of the kidneys. And stress can affect the kidneys. So stress can sometimes give you the urge that you have to go to the bathroom. Um, or uh, if you have chronic stress, you can also have chronic kidney problems. And I want to talk about the emotional aspects of fear uh, at the end of the class today. So um, it's better to prevent stones than it is to try and pass them. That would be words from my husband. So, now, you want to make sure you st stay well hydrated. You know, health is a journey, and sometimes you wish you knew 30 years ago what you knew today type of thing. Well, um, my husband loved Pepsi. He drank Pepsi with uh, his lunch, and, you know, 30 years ago, he didn't know that 
Pepsi could be <laughs> detrimental to kidneys. So avoid acid forming beverages and foods, especially caffeinated and carbonated beverages. Avoid foods that increase urinary oxalate, which are um, nuts, peanuts, especially chocolate and tea. So magnesium and vitamin B6 are good supplements to take to prevent kidney stones. It can also um, help to take lithotriptic herbs. So what are lithotriptic herbs? Well, lithotriptic herbs are hydrangea, exactly what this nutritional-based doctor, uh, functional medicine doctor recommended. He broke up his stones with hydrangea. There's another herb called gravel root, um, stone breaker, uh, and lemon juice. Uh, a lot of people will do lemon juice. But if you've ever had a kidney stone, you really want the big guns. And to me, hydrangea. And I've also used hydrangea for um, kidney and, or urinary infections. I've uh, used hydrangea. People who have um, stones like um, in the heel, where uh, I forget what that's called, where you have um, where the calcium is built up on this, uh, like a spur, heel spur. And um, I took hydrangea with JPX to calm a extremely difficult uh, UTI. Uh, where I was actually, when I would urinate, I would urinate blood. And so that, let me tell you, that is painful. And I, the herbal combination I used was JPX. And uh, JPX has got juniper, but it's also got uva ursi. And Nature Sunshine uh, primarily grows in Eastern and Southern Europe. The local residents go into the hills to collect the leaves in December and January. So it's really um, important to not just have the herb, but to have the herb when it's highest in, in the nutritional value you're looking for. And Arbutin is highest in um, Uva Ursi in the months of December and January. Now, these folks represent the latest generation in a long line of wild crafters who have been harvesting this plant to provide maximum sustainability for the future. So they are looking into, you know, making sure that this particular herb will be available for not just their children, but their children's children and their children's children's children. So I love that. Sustainability. Passing kidney stones. Now mix the juice of <clears throat> four fresh lemons in a gallon of distilled water and drink this while fasting. In other words, that's the only thing you take in all day. And take lithotropic herbs such as hydrangea or gravel root every two to four hours. Now you can optionally take kava kava or lobelia to relax urinary passages as um, and drink unsweetened cranberry juice. You can also take whole cranberries and make your own juice by um, gently warming the cranberry, to mashing it with a um, potato masher and then um, passing that through a sieve. Then you can later take the cranberries and make cranberry uh, sauce or, you know, cranberry pie or whatever, cranberry jelly. <laughs> but um, if you take marshmallow or corn silk, that too will soothe the urinary membranes while the stone is passing. But remember that cranberry actually um, does like a Teflon coating of the um, urinary system. Now let's talk about nighttime urination. Now bedwetting and uresis in children and the need to wake up frequently at night to urinate is called nocturia in adults and they're related. Children wet the bed because they usually do not wake up to urinate at night. 
Now, they also have related this to children being stressed out. So in other words, if there's a divorce in the family, there's um, changing locations, there's you know a lot of different things. These past three years have been filled with fear and fear-driven uh, premises. And you, if you're finding that uh, your child all of a sudden starts bedwetting, then um, there's a formula called distress remedy that is beneficial for children. And um, I love it. So uh, distress remedy is for children or adults. So it doesn't matter. Now, adults who have developed more sphincter muscle control will wake up with the urge to urinate. You know, they call the kidneys the patient organs because they will wait. <laughs> so if you're not paying attention to them, your body will at them <laughs> during the nighttime. So bedwetting normally resolves itself as the child gets older, but you know, it's embarrassing for children. And if you can handle it with like corn silk or some mild uh, herbs and then dealing with their um, stress, uh, you know, let them talk with you. Um, and also don't feed them sugary desserts before bed because that too has been related to uh, anuresis. Caffeine in uh, adults uh, can contribute to uh, bedtime urination. So here's some remedies for nighttime urination. Um, remember, it can be a sign of excessive stress, uh, blood sugar imbalances, and or adrenal fatigue. Um, avoid sugary foods before bedtime in favor of a light protein snack. Giving children licorice root, licorice root calms the adrenal glands. And remember, we saw that the adrenal glands sit right on top of those kidneys, and they will give it signals throughout the night um, that you're dealing with stress. Now there's some wonderful herbs um, that have moisture, that they can add moisture um, to the body. Um, astragalus, schisandra, licorice root, and asparagus root are very beneficial. I, I urge you to do some research and, and uh, look these herbs up and find out what is said about these. Now, I know, unfortunately, there's a lot of stuff out there that, you know, they want to direct you to um, taking medications. And they should be your last resort, not your first. Now, prostate problems can also um, create problems because as the prostate swells, it pinches on the um, on the urethra. You see here, here's the urethra. This is a normal uh, prostate size. And then if it swells, it actually will pinch. You see the narrowing here. So prostatitis, again, with the itis, is when the prostate becomes inflamed and swells, making urination difficult. So the prostate can also enlarge due to overstimulation of estrogens. You know, soy and those type of things can actually um, affect your estrogen. Um, and unfortunately, within the last three or four years, we're seeing young people wonder about their sex identity and are given these hormones that they're not being told how these can affect their body in many other ways. So um, prostate, one of the conditions that um, a lot, as a person, as a male ages, they get uh, benign prostate hyperplasia. And that can be controlled and make sure that you're drinking the water and reducing those acids so the prostate doesn't have, uh, doesn't swell like that. The prostate uh, remedies zinc. You know, men need zinc. And it's just part of their makeup. Uh, women need magnesium and men need zinc. So uh, omega-3 essential fatty acids 
both people. We all need that. We are getting too many omega-6s. Uh, seed oils uh, have done us a huge disservice. The um, canola oil and, and uh, these oils that are made from seeds, uh, corn oil, it's detrimental. And we need to go back to doing uh, things that are rich in omega-3. Now, um, by the way, I have a whole video on uh, omega-3 and where you get those from. So uh, nettle root, um, pygium, and saw palmetto. These herbs are found in the formula called men's formula. And the men in my family, they take men's formula to protect their prostate. You know, you um, because of the choices and the way we eat, uh, men in the, by the age of 40 are starting to see uh, swollen, um, inflamed prostates. And to protect that, you need to look at your diet and maybe take some herbs that are beneficial to rebalance the um, things that are going on in the in the body. So for pr prostatitis, uh, I'm going to go through a list of herbs at the end of this, and um, it will give you uh, matching remedies for these particular situations. So. Um, Let's go on with this. Now, kidney weakness. Uh, symptoms of declining kidney function include incontinence, nighttime urination, excessive urgency, structural issues like arthritis and osteoporosis, low back pain. How many people are suffering with low back pain and do not relate it to the fact they're not drinking enough water and that they need to strengthen their kidneys? So um, now there's another one, rigidity in the personality. So in other words, they don't want to go with the flow and are constantly battling with things. So, and chronic fears and anxiety. We're going to talk about that. So let's uh, talk about some kidney tonics. Herbs that help strengthen the urinary system include goldenrod, which improves kidney filtration. Nettle leaf, which helps kidneys flush acid. Parsley supplies electrolytes, you know, get rid of that Gatorade and start chomping on some parsley and dandelion, which is rich in potassium. Cleavers, we talked about those. They gently improve the uh, urinary and lymphatic system. So here's the thing. The, Kidneys are related to the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system and the um, blood uh, basically run side by side. The blood jump, jumps um, toxins into the lymphatic system. And with fluids, the lymphatic system dumps it into the urinary system. So that's a short version of how that works in the body. Eucomia and marinda root are tonics for kidney qi used in traditional Chinese medicine. And Chinese activator, um, kidney activator is a formula that is so great for a kidney. Now, renal failure. Now, this is like the end of the end here. Um, obviously, you're going to need medical help. Kidney fail, renal, renal failure is nothing to just, um, you, you really need to pay attention to this. Um, and unfortunately, occasionally, you've been ignoring the symptoms for so long that um, the kidneys get progressively weaker and weaker, and you're not getting rid of the acids in the body. Uh, you're totally inflamed everywhere. Um, rising levels of urea in the blood will harm the brain and the heart. Eventually, it can lead to congestive heart failure, arrhythmia, tachycardia, and fib fibrillation. Now, a lot of these things, you have not been told that the kidneys are related to these conditions. And unfortunately, medical treatment is dialysis or, you know, a kidney transplant. So 
not a good thing. So remedies for renal failure. Renal failure is a serious condition. Like I said, you need to see a medical doctor. Um, helpful remedies may include nettle seed. Now we've talked about nettle leaf and how picky this underside of the nettle leaf is. And when you pick it, you don't pick from here up, you pick from the top down so that you don't get any of that chemical that um, is found on these little hairy substances. But the nettle seed itself is what is beneficial for the you know, most extreme part of kidney problems. And nettle seed is found in KBC. Um, which is a wonderful formula. It supports kidneys and bone. It, it, they call it the um, uh, additional chiropractic adjustment. So when you find like you've been to the chiropractor and you're walking out the door and you're out of adjustment already, then your body needs some um, KBC, which will help with um, supporting those uh, adjustments. So it's also called the Chinese water increasing formula. It's a, um, you wanna make sure you're doing a diet of mostly fresh fruits and vegetables, juiced potassium rich greens like celery and parsley and chard. See, here we go, how important vegetables and fruit whole foods can be in your diet. Now you can do char charcoal poultices over the kidneys so you don't necessarily eat the charcoal but you make a poultice out of it and uh, place it over the kidney. <coughs> and um, Epsom salt drawing baths are very, very beneficial because they'll pull that acid out of the body. So let's talk about urinary formulas. So this is where I said, <clears throat> so the water increasing formula, KBC, has all of these herbs in it and they're helpful for kidney weakness improves kidney filtration. Um, and the indications we talked about were low back pain, back problems, sciatica, incontinence, urgency, frequent urination, interstitial cystitis, prostatitis, osteoporosis, arthritis, weak knees, premature ejaculation, gout, uric acid retention. So <clears throat> then we go to Chinese water decreasing formula. So this is the Chinese kidney activator. And by the way, um, all of these supplements that I'm talking about um, can be found in the description below and you can get a 25% discount if you follow that link. So um, <clears throat> now this one doesn't contain any stimulating diuretics. So this is, um, you know, when not when you're in the chronic stage, but when you're uh, actually, when you're in the chronic stage and not in the acute stage. So when you're in the acute stage, you're finding um, water retention. But this also is for edema, breast swelling and tenderness, prostatitis, burning or painful urination, scant urination, and um, your, uh, your uh, inflammation of the urethra. Now we have uh, herbal diuretic formula. This one um, is um, the capsule form. These are several, okay? So there's a capsule formula that includes juniper berry, parsley leaf, uber ursi, and it's called kidney activator. The liquid formula that I talked about that also has, a, it's called kidney drainage. There's a lymphatic drainage and it's recommended that you do both of them. You take 20 drops of each of them in uh, 12 to 14 ounces of water and you sip on it. Throughout the day, you are constantly creating um, benefit to the urinary system. And then there's a tonic formula called urinary maintenance. Well, I absolutely love. And so anybody who has had you know kidney problems or constant backache or whatever, then they might look into taking this urinary maintenance. 
Now, UTI prevention, we want to do cranberry and bushu. That is a formula that is um, very beneficial. We talked about that before. Um, there's a basic golden seal and parthenium, and that's called PS2. Um, <clears throat> and um, the two stands from a uh, well-known herbalist to, who formulated that. Dan, somebody, I wish I knew his last name. Um, a diuretic formula is, now Don Kwai. Uh, Don Kwai has been labeled a female herb, but actually Don Kwai is anti-inflammatory. So you have an anti-inflammatory with an astringent, with parsley, with uber ursi. And this formula is really, really beneficial. And it's called P-X. So let's talk about fear and anxiety and how it relates to the kidneys. Um, uh, we have been inundated with fear constantly, fear of a microbe that might kill us when it's only, you know, 99.1% going to cause death. It's been a nightmare since 2020. And if you don't have some kind of faith to support your fear, you're going to be inundated with fear. Um, fear is uh, often our insecurities on steroids. You know, uh, somebody poking the bear, so to speak, constantly uh, finding um, bears behind every tree. And <clears throat> it is a very disruptive uh, to uh, our entire life. The way we used to run our lives have been topsy-turvied um, since 2020. And um, trying to get back to any kind of normalcy is we're going to have to find. Find your own way of being normal. Don't depend on somebody else's new normal. You create what you consider normal and what feeds your soul. Um, pink grapefruit is an essential oil that's beneficial for the entire family. It, <clears throat> it is a lovely smelling formula. It doesn't offend anybody. And um, it has been uh, wonderful to be helpful, you know, uh, to use it during dinner so you can have nicer conversations. Get back to the family dinner. Even if you just do it once a week, have family dinners again. Talk about what is going on in your life, what you're concerned about. Um, you know, your family unit, build the strength in the family unit. Now there's a uh, flower essence. Flower essence is, is an energy remedy. And Be Courageous is one of the energy remedies I use to calm fear and help people think more clearly, recognize that what somebody else is telling you to be fearful about doesn't apply to you. You have to think about what's going on in your life and how it makes for um importance in what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis and don't get caught up with what could be. So I hope you enjoyed this herbal hour class on the urinary system. Um, I can be reached Dr. Mary at bornforhealth.com, but I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up, uh, comments, you know, I always check my comments, subscribe, and please share this important information with others. Because I think with a strong community, we can battle a lot of different things, including poor health. And I hope that you um, look into other classes that I've given. I'm approaching 300 of these video presentations, and um, I'm going to have a grand celebration when that happens. So uh, stay tuned. Um, I hope to see you in other videos, and I look forward to any comments that you have about what you learned in today's class and how you uh, plan to share it with others. So Health to you and bye for now.